For today's spread, I will be creating a crackle gradient from small crackles to large crackles. Hello lovely butterfly, welcome back. For today's video I will be creating that gradient crackle effect that I mentioned at the beginning, but I will at the same time be creating a gradient in color. So it's a two in one. But first I need some background color going on. So I'm just applying my fresco finish with my paintbrush and then buffing the edge of the color with a baby wipe so that I already get that gradient feel, even if it's just my background color. For this crackle effect, I'm going for a two-step crackle, which means that I'm using a crackle glaze that goes in between my layers of paint and I'm applying it directly on the paper because I need quite a generous layer on the right. And then using my palette knife, I'm just pulling it to the left side of my channel. That is how I will create a different effect in the crackles. I will have smaller crackles on the left than I will have on the right. I left it to dry for a very, very long time. And then I can go in with my second layer of paint, which will reveal the crackle effect. To make sure that I can work on a big surface, I'm using a bigger sponge than I usually do. And I'm applying my paint in one go. I'm already slightly mixing it up on the side. Uh, I'm using two colors, which are pretty close to one another. You'll find all the names of the colors in the description of this video. And then I'm also going in with white to continue to pull it to the white side of the spread. So this way I'm creating my gradient in color. It starts to crackle as soon as I'm done applying the paint. And because these are fresco finish, I can go in with the heat gun and help speed up the process. And that is where you can see that I have slighter, smaller cracks on the left than I have on the right. And then you cannot even see the mini tiny crackles that I have all around. Now to reveal them all, I'm going in with a very gentle sanding block lifting up some of that paint to reveal the grunginess because well, that's what applying crackles is all about, isn't it? So I need to help it a little bit to reveal the crackles that I have, the very tiny crackles that I have all the way on the edge where I have the lightest of the color. And to do that, I'm using Lindy's Gang Spray Ink. Um, I'm using the same color as the paint, but it has this delicious turquoise shine to it. And of course, I'm keeping that piece of kitchen roll on the side because I'm going to reuse that later on. Now the crackles are starting to show like everywhere. And I'm going to cover them up because now I can finally start my actual art journaling spread. Now that I have this background that I wanted to have. The first thing that I want to add is some more um, gesso going over my Epicycle stencil. Yes, this is one of the new ones. This is the small version. Um, and then I'm going to combine it with the bigger version of that same Epicycle stencil. Just going in with gesso and a sponge and just dabbing on some white color on the right, but then thinking that's not enough and pulling it through on the left. But of course I have to clean my stencil in between each step. Otherwise I'm going to just get gesso all over and that's not what I want to do. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think that it makes it so interesting to have that going from the white all the way to the color. But I also want to add like very slight mm, contrasting accents. So I'm going in with my new colors too, which are water soluble, adding a little bit of water to push it into the background and into the gesso and then lifting it up with a piece of kitchen roll because I just want it to be a hint of contrast. I don't want it to actually sit on there. More often than not, I like my contrast to be very soft and gentle and very discreet. But I would like to know, how do you like your contrast? Do you like it like very obvious, very out there? Or on the contrary, like me, do you like it very soft and gentle? Let me know in comment. To add even more grunge, I'm going in with my charcoal pencil. This one is water soluble. I'm adding a tiny bit of water, playing with a water brush to make it move without moving what I have on the background because my Lindy's gang is going to react if I go in with too much water. Uh, moving it around just a tiny bit and then lifting it just so that I have like a black hint instead of like really something black on the edge. I'm using a sticker of one of the previous month's A Layer A Day sticker sheets just to create an edge for my circle. This is something that I've been liking to do in my channel lately. And I'm tracing um, with my black charcoal pencil a circle around the white circles. So really going for that black and white um, contrast. This time I'm blending the charcoal pencil with a blending stump because I don't want to move my Lindy's around. Hello, Alfred Zeta stencil. <laughs> um, I'm going to go over the one, two, three, four, five numbers with some soft molding paste mixed in with some black paint, um, just to have like something really bold and contrasting going on on my spread. But of course, I'm not going to leave it like that. I left it aside to dry, but completely forgot my camera wasn't rolling because it was drying time. And meanwhile, I had applied some black splatters using a black Posca pen. Now I'm repeating the same thing, this time with a Montana acrylic uh, paint pen. Um, this time with pink, just to enhance a bit of the grunginess and the color that I have in the background. Meanwhile, my molding paste was completely dry. I went back in with a Posca pen, this time a finer one, and doodled on the edge to enhance that line effect that I have on the right. This is something that I like to do in my journals, and as this is my journal, I don't see why I wouldn't do it. I'm going back in with my circle stencil and that same fine black pen to doodle around the circle, just to enhance that black circle around the white. Now I do like the one, two, three, four, five, but it needs a little extra because it's just sitting there. To do that little extra, I first need a base and that base is done by going over it with a tiny bit of white fresco finish. And I'm using the rest up to add splatters um, on my spread and on my desk, as you can see, as I'm cleaning the rest off. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to go in with a turquoise Lindy's Gang Spray and I actually really wanted that shine. So I really shook up the bottle before taking out some of that color and then applying it with uh, my palette knife where I have the gesso. So I needed something um, lighter, uh, way lighter color before going in with that because it wouldn't have been visible on the black. Remember this one? So I left it to dry and now I wanted to have a strip, but I wanted to rip it. I didn't have the patience, but that didn't work. So I needed to cut it with my scissors and then go in with some water to um, distress the edge because I really wanted to have like a very small strip. Thank <laughs> you. 
it was still too large but trying to make it smaller by ripping would not work and that shiny blue was just a tiny bit too much so I decided to fold it in two so that I would still have that shiny blue peeking through yet still have the same color as the background as the main color and I used my tiny attacher to put it into place after having a little fiddle with it um, but as it was folded, it was sticking up too much. So I also applied a little bit of glue at the bottom so that it would stick down completely. These are all my little number stamp set. Now I often get the question, where can I find these? On which stamp set? Well, there's actually a number of series on almost every stamp set that I made. So there is no way to get all the numbers all at once. They're like on several um, stamp sets. This is from one of my um, word sticker sheets. And I just wanted to have like a general overview of what my spread was saying on the left, add my actual journaling around my circle. And then I thought I was done. I thought that this was it, but I decided that it needed an extra little focal point in that circle. And it also needed another word to finish off what I had to say. So yes, this spread is actually saying a lot about what's going on. Um, it's saying a lot about me. It's saying a lot about what's going on in my life. And hello, big head. <laughs> um, and to give my little word the same colors as my background, I'm going in with some uh, new colors too. Again, water soluble, mixing them up with some water and then pushing them into the sticker. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope you have subscribed to my channel. I hope you have clicked on the little bell to receive notifications of new videos. A huge, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so, so much for being the most amazing butterfly patrons out there. Now to all of you butterflies, don't forget to put down a layer a day. Butterfly kisses.